resources, inspiring interviews, business practices, and practical advice to take your art career to the next level. Join Sergio Gomez in today's Artist Next Level and get ready to take control of your career. Hello, my next level friends. Welcome to a new episode of the Art Next Level podcast. I'm very happy to share with you an interview with artist Fred Moss. We're going to talk about his latest residency project. And before I do that, I want to tell you about another podcast that I have that is pretty active. I don't know if you know about it. I don't know if you're already downloading it, but it's the Breakfast with Sergio podcast, which you also can find in iTunes, in Google Play, Podcaster, Anchor FM, and many others. Breakfast with Sergio is a show that I do. Actually, it's a, it's a live show that I do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday right from my dinner table. And while I have my breakfast, I share with you about 10 minutes of inspiration, of ideas, uh, of uh, things that can help grow your art career. So check it out. Inside, uh, insightful stories, insightful information for your art career. It's called Breakfast with Sergio. Just Google Breakfast with Sergio and you can find all the episodes also in YouTube if you rather want to watch them on video. So I hope you join me again next time on Breakfast with Sergio. Born and raised in the Chicago area, Fred Moss was drawing and sketching the world around him from a young age. He grew up visiting the Chicago Art Institute, often admiring the outstanding impressionistic and classical painting collections. He attended the College of Creative Studies after receiving a partial school grant and earned a bachelor's degree. After graduation, he studied with renowned painter Romel de la Torre. He helped him convey on canvas his thoughts and feelings. He also studied the he also studied at the Florence Academy of Art in his grandparents' native country of Italy. He has participated in many other galleries, such as the Art and Art Studio, the Hinsdale Center for the Arts, Beverly Arts Center, Karen Solemn's Gallery, Hinsdale Gallery, Arlington Heights Historical Museums, Elmhurst Art Guild, and many, many more. And I am super happy to have in the show today, Fred Moss. Hi, Fred. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. Of course. Welcome to the Art Next Level podcast. I'm very excited that you decided to join us today. We're going to have a wonderful conversation, and I'm really looking forward to this. So are you ready to take us to the next level? Yes, I am. <laughs> awesome. All right, Fred. Well, thank you so much again for being here. We're going to talk about you know you as an artist, your career, and particularly something I'm very interested about, which is the Crater Lake National Park Residency Program that you just came back from. and You were there in May. Uh, of this year, mm -hmm. 2018, and I think you had a great experience. I saw pictures that you posted on uh, yep. social mm -hmm. media, and uh, so since I saw that, like, I really want to interview Fred about that experience, how it went, <laughs> because I think uh, the uh, National Park Residency is kind of a, a unique place. It's a great opportunity for artists, and I think, uh, you know, you can bring some, some good stories and maybe en encourage some of our friends listening here to consider also applying for residencies of this type, so... I think that's going to be awesome. Great. So, uh, Fred, now, uh, before we uh, kind of get started with some of your story, uh, where are you located at? Are you in the, in the city of Chicago? Or, um, what state are you I'm in? I'm just outside of Chicago. I'm in okay. Illinois. Okay. I'm uh, just outside of the city of Chicago. I live in the west suburbs. Okay. So I'm very close to Chicago. Wonderful. And uh, I visited uh, your gallery a couple of times. Fabulous. Awesome. Very cool. That, that's good news. <laughs> and Fred, you're also, <laughs> you also very familiar with our, our Next Level program. You're a member of the program too. And uh, so you know, yeah. we can chat a little bit about that. So uh, let me uh, start a little bit with your backstory, right? Uh, I know kind of what you've been doing recently, but I don't know much about you as how, you know, where you grew up, how you became an artist. If you can tell us briefly, uh, you know, a little bit of your backstory. Sure. Well, I grew up in the Chicagoland area, and one thing that was influential for me was the Chicago Art Institute. Mm -hmm. uh, I went there when I was young, and I saw all the Impressionist works, and I really just, you know, was inspired and uh, just loved the Impressionist collection that they had. Mm -hmm. And then they had also some traveling exhibits that came to the Art Institute, so that was very influential to me. And I've done studies of some of the paintings there. And I've sketched actually in the Art Institute and have just enjoyed having that uh, resource to go to. Mm -hmm. uh, I've visited some of the traveling shows they've had. 
And then for college, I went to the College for Creative Studies in Detroit, Michigan. Okay. And then I had the opportunity to spend a summer at the Florence Academy of Art doing a summer program there. Mm -hmm. And it was fantastic. I mm -hmm. discovered another just, you know, another inspirational, well, just a piece of artwork to do, which is the Italian landscapes. Mm -hmm. uh, I just would get on a train on the weekends and I would go to some of the different towns. I went to Lake Como, the Cinque Terre, Vienna, wow. uh, wow. and Venice, and I took lots of photographs. I did some drawings, some sketches, and I, you know, what I could as far as plein air there. And uh, then I brought all these images back to my studio. And for a couple of years, I was just working on Italy landscapes and seascapes from my trip when I was over there and from when I was studying uh, at the Florence Academy of Art. Mm -hmm. So... That was very influential to me, too. I just to doing a lot more landscapes and cityscapes and uh, painting some of those interesting pieces. Mm -hmm. The Cinque Terre was something that I really liked a lot. They have these colorful buildings all along the coast. Okay. And they actually have a director of good taste that picks out which building should be which color. So oh, really? they're colored. Sure. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it makes a great painting subject matter. <laughs> yeah. They just all blend together so well and are interesting. Mm-hmm. And uh, I did a couple of paintings of the Cinque Terre. I hiked up trails looking for some good views and found some. Mm -hmm. I picked up a few from watching uh, Rick, Street's, Rick Steve's Travel Guides okay. and uh, followed some of those and uh, got some great photos and great sketches of Italy. And I got some good uh, direction, too, at the Florence Academy of Art. They had a very good program. It was rooted in just the traditions that they have of drawing and painting there. Okay. And they also will go to the museums there. We went and we would study some of the works by Michelangelo and Leonardo, and they mm -hmm. talk about them. And it was just really interesting to hear them talk about it and uh, go to the different museums and uh, just learn about the artists and their what they were trying to do. Mm -hmm. And the style of painting that they're teaching is basically their style. And then they can kind of say, this is you know how we're doing it, and this is you know how Michelangelo was kind of yeah. working on rendering something so it was uh it was a great experience it, it sounds very cool it sounds very awesome so then you came back to it was. You, then, so then you came back here to to chicago area after that and uh, you continue working mm -hmm. here in the area yeah i've mm -hmm. done uh, some different exhibits mm -hmm. i also participated in some different public artworks okay i participated in the horses of honor exhibit that oh, was yeah. out mm -hmm. uh, in 2014 Mm -hmm. I did a horse that was uh, Chicago-themed. Okay. It had uh, the Chicago flag going across it, and out of the top of it, it had the Chicago skyline rising out of it in the blue. Okay. And uh, it was just you know, an honor to be a part of that project. Yeah. And uh, it was just... And after that, I worked on another project. It was the Canine Project. Oh, yeah, I see. And that was... the. the yeah, the dogs that they had out last year, I did the Black mm -hmm. Hawk themed one. Okay. So I did a Black Hawk logo on the back of uh, the canine. Mm -hmm. And I also got the signatures of the Chicago Blackhawks. Oh, okay. And they were very gracious to help out, and it was mm -hmm. great. I got about 15 signatures. Wow. And they put them all on the top of the head. Mm -hmm. And this dog then, they didn't put it out on the street. They put it in the uh, Chicago Athletic Association okay. and kept it in that building. And uh, my sponsor bought it before it went out for sale. So nice. uh, he was <laughs> a fan of the uh, Blackhawks. And it was just, uh, you know, a great piece to work on. And uh, yeah. it was, you know, fun to work on. Exactly. So And and it was, it was also um, a good project because it helps out the community quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. The proceeds for it went to the, for Paw Chicago and also for the Chicago Police Memorial Foundation, mm -hmm. which helps the family of uh, fallen police officers. I see. Both the Horses of Honor and the Canine Project uh, are both uh, mm -hmm. related to that. Awesome. So how do you describe your work right now? You know, what's in your studio? What's happening right now? I would describe my work as impressionistic landscape paintings of uh, different landscapes, cityscapes, seascapes, mm -hmm. 
Right now, I'm working on a series of national park paintings. I've been okay. to about 14 national parks over the last couple of summers. Oh, wow. Enjoyed my time in all of them. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, they're just uh, wonderful places to go. If you can, I highly recommend it. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, I'm just starting to work on a painting of Crater Lake. Mm-hmm. I've worked on some other paintings of the national parks. I've done some of Yellowstone. I've got mm-hmm. one of Yellowstone where there's uh, bison in it. Mm-hmm. And there's one where there's a couple of bison. Okay. And when I was at Yellowstone, I was just photographing as many bison as I could. Okay. But uh, right now, I've just started to work on a painting of Crater Lake. It's got uh, some snow on the rim because mm-hmm. there's still snow in uh, June, actually, oh, wow. at Crater Lake. Mm-hmm. But I'm working on an impressionistic painting of Crater Lake. Mm-hmm. You can see the lake and the rim at the end. The focal point will be the snow and the mm-hmm. nice ridge they have off in the distance. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm working on right now, and I'm working on a series of national park paintings. Okay. I've got a couple done. I've got, like I said, Yellowstone, and I've got one of Glacier National Park, nice landscape of that. Mm-hmm. And I've done one of Delicate Arch. Okay. It's this really interesting arch that's in Arches National Park. I hiked that spot and got some photos of it. It was actually a strenuous hike. It took about an hour to get there, and it was all uphill. Wow. And surprisingly, going downhill is even more strenuous because you're using muscles that you don't normally use. <laughs> and I wasn't able to bring my painting gear with me on this trip uh-huh. because it was uh, pretty much of a hard hike. So I just brought my camera and took pictures okay. and used that for photo reference for that painting. Got it. So I've got uh, several National Park paintings that I'm working on right now. Wow, so you'll be pretty busy. <laughs> you got a busy studio going right now. Huh? That is cool. Yes, I do. <laughs> so, fabulous. So let's go right into the topic of the Crater Lake National Park Residency because I think that sounds really fascinating, really interesting. And I remember when you you know, you know, were working on applying for that and uh, working on your proposal. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we through the Our Next Level program, we kind of uh, were working with you on that too, giving you some ideas and some feedback. And uh, so you apply, you send it, you get accepted. And so tell us what happened, you know. Tell us a little bit about what makes Crater Lake National Park Residency a special place uh, why were you excited about it? And then uh, how was it like, you know, to actually get there and, and to see it uh, um, or, or to be there for the first time? It was an amazing experience. It was just wonderful. Uh, you know, it's one of our national parks and all the national parks are fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, my office was a scenic landscape at Crater Lake National Park. Mm-hmm. Crater Lake is the uh, fifth oldest national park. It was founded by Teddy Roosevelt back in 1905, and it's known for its namesake, Crater Lake, Mm -hmm. which is just this amazing lake that's in a crater. And it originally used to be a mountain. Actually, it was a volcano. Mm -hmm. And about 7,000 years ago, it erupted. And this eruption caused the mountain to collapse and crumble, forming Mm -hmm. this giant crater. And it just became a very deep crater, You can see evidence of the eruption on certain rims. You can see some reddish coloring or some scarring in some certain areas. And it's just, you know, already where it is, it's about 7,000 to 8,000 feet high. Wow. And this is just the base of it. I mean, you go up there. If you're looking at it from the size, it looks like it's a mountain. Hmm. But you go up there. And, you know, you're just, it's this rim. So what originally used to be there was even a much larger mountain that just collapsed in this incredible volcanic upheaval. Okay. And after that, uh, this giant crater was formed and water started collecting there. And over time, it just filled with more and more. Now, it's all water that comes from snowfall and rain. So it's very pure water. And it's formed over thousands of years. There's no streams flowing in of it, into it, or out of it. Hmm. So it's just all water that's coming from snow and uh, just the rain. Wow. And scientists marvel at this water. It's the purest water probably on the earth. It's the mm-hmm. most pristine. And it's also one of the deepest lakes in the country, too. I believe it's about 1,900 feet deep. Wow. And scientists marvel at its purity. When I was at Crater Lake... Uh, at the residency, there was a journal there, and scientists had stayed there, and they were writing in the journal about some of their studies that they were doing. It was kind of interesting. Okay. Uh, and there were also some artists that stayed at the residencies and left uh, some notes and information about their residencies. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, the scientists will study this lake because it's unaffected by any 
other kind of mm-hmm. environmental activities. Wow. And uh, the water is just incredibly blue. It has this blue hue that's just mm-hmm. incredibly blue. Mm-hmm. And the reflections in it are just fantastic. You can see clouds on a cloudy day that reflect into it. You see the sides of the mountain. Wow. And they're just amazing reflections. And when I was there, too, there was still snow on the sides of it. Okay. Uh, I, I, I remember seeing that in the pictures, the yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but I remember seeing that in some of the pictures oh, yeah. you posted, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, yeah, it's surprising. You know, in fact, uh, I was issued snowshoes when I was there. <laughs> there's, you know, and there's some areas that, you know, and there's still, you know, quite a bit of snow. And I had to hike over uh, a couple of feet of snow to get to certain interesting areas. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's just uh, they have a lot more snow, and in, during uh, the winter time, it's an incredible task keeping the roads plowed there. Mm. But where they are, they just get a lot of snow in this area. Yeah, fabulous. So it's it's quite amazing to see. So, so where do you stay? So, do they have a space reserved for the residency program? Are, are you staying with other artists? Are you by yourself? You know, how, how is the setting for you, for you there? Okay, well, it's through the National Park Service, Mm -hmm. and they have their own uh, building there, their own residency. Different parks have different uh, residencies and different programs, different requirements. Okay. But this one, they have their own residency, and while I was there, I was the only one there. Now, at other times, they've had a couple of people there. They have a couple of different bedrooms. Uh, It used to be a ranger's house, I believe, and it was converted into a residency uh, maybe about a decade ago. So it it actually has uh, running water and Mm -hmm. facilities in the uh, building, and it was a great location to stay at. Uh, I had this incredible view of the mountains or ridge of Crater Lake, Mm -hmm. and I'm about a 10-minute drive from the rim. Oh, wow. And drive up to the rim, yeah, and, you know, then you have this incredible view of Crater Lake, Mm -hmm. and you can just look around and see the lake, and it's just amazing. Wow. And while I was there, too, it was uh, part of the rim was still closed off when I was first there for Mm -hmm. snow. Mm -hmm. That's how, yeah, and, you know, just how incredible the snowfall is there. (laughs) But uh, after a couple of days, it opened, so I was able to go further and explore more on the roads. And I also did some hiking, too, around some of the areas around the ridge and just mm-hmm. found some incredible views mm. and uh, got some incredible photos. You probably see, There's one of me, too, taking pictures of photos, and I've hiked over all this snow. Mm-hmm. And it's just odd at that time, you know, you're in all the snow, but it's somewhat warmer during the day. Okay. So during the day, you know, it can be about 60 degrees there, and then at night it gets much cooler. Right, right. But uh, the snow will linger until somewhere in June probably. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's just, you know, beautiful country, beautiful scenery. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a great program. I'm just honored to be a part of it and just had an amazing experience. I worked on plein air paintings while I was there. Mm -hmm. And I also took a lot of photographs. Mm -hmm. My plein air gear, I have a special traveling case that I uh, have. It's kind of a small one. And I put oil paint in it, and there's a tripod that I hook up to it, and then I can use that to paint on location. And I primarily work with oil, so it's Mm -hmm. just great to be able to do that and then paint there. Fabulous. And I have a few other things that I bring and uh, just, you know, that you need for painting like that. Mm -hmm. So I did little studies. Okay. Okay. And I remember through... Yeah, go ahead. Mm Mm-hmm. Is it? Uh, uh, yeah, I remember and, through, and through I the, found some, Yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Found some great areas to photograph. Uh, there was just some incredible photography. I waited out uh, for sunset one night, and I found this really okay. good spot that was not too far from where the lodge is. Okay. Lots of national parks have lodges, and mm-hmm. I found this spot not too far from the lodge, and I was able to get some good uh, sunset pictures at that point. Oh. And these clouds had come over, and they were just hanging on the ridge. I mean, they just it would look very mm-hmm. odd. They were just hanging there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, just incredible scenery. Wow, that's amazing. Incredible scenery. Fabulous. So I remember that throughout the application process, you know, part of that was also talking about uh, not only the work that you were going to be doing there as an artist, uh, and the and the painting, the plein air paintings, and so on, but also in, uh, some sort of engagement activities with the com- with the people uh, that would visit the park and so on. Uh, tell me a little bit about how, you know how did that went, and you had a chance to interact with people, 
uh, were they curious about mm -hmm. what were you doing? Uh, tell me a little bit about you know that process too, which I think that's 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 an important part of the application, and it's also an important part of the program itself. Okay, sure, yeah. I hosted a design a postcard workshop for adults and families at Discovery Point. Mm -hmm. I found this one area mm -hmm. after I'd driven around that I thought would be good for doing a workshop there. Okay. It has this incredible view of Crater Lake. You see the lake, you see the mountains, and there's an area where people come and they park. So mm -hmm. I set up there, and we put it on the Facebook site for the park that I would be hosting a Design Your Postcard event on Memorial Day weekend. Okay. So over Memorial Day weekend, I did that, and it was a great experience. I uh, had supplies for different people. I had pencils. I had pads, mm. uh, different things, and something to hold them on to. Mm -hmm. And lots of people, you know, started to do it. And then even, you know, when some of the other people were just coming along and seeing what was going on, some other people were interested and in, uh, just uh, asked about it and started drawing, too. Mm -hmm. So... I would just give a little bit of uh, instruction, you know, or try to, you know, just about landscape painting or drawing. Mm -hmm. And people had a good time, and they enjoyed it, and they were very happy. Mm -hmm. There was, you know, I thought that originally that, you know, a lot of these people would want to mail their postcards because they were actually postcard size. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they had the area in there where they could, you know, uh, put a stamp on it and mail it. Mm -hmm. But actually a lot of them decided that they wanted to keep the pieces of art for themselves and one family that was there. Mm -hmm. They all got involved and did it, and they decided that they were going to keep it and get it all framed, the three of their drawings together. Oh, nice. So okay. it was kind of, yeah, it was rewarding to hear that, and they really enjoyed it. And uh, we talked about national parks, too, while I was there. Mm -hmm. We talked about the different ones we've been to, and he was... Uh, uh, there was this one gentleman that was suggesting I should go to the north room of Grand Canyon because I'd really like it there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was talking about some of the other parks that I was at. And it was a great experience. And some other people, you know, enjoyed it and found it was a good outlet and uh, enjoyed drawing and painting there. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things I did to engage the public. Mm -hmm. I also, uh, when I set up my Pine Air set up too i would talk to some of the other people and i would tell them i was a visiting artist okay. and yeah there were some people that actually took pictures of me and uh <laughs> emailed me back with the pictures oh really they actually sent it to you that's awesome that is pretty cool yeah that's, and, and i think that also you know makes makes the experience not only for you as the artist but also as the visitor of the park make more memorable right i mean they might not expect to yeah. see in the national park uh you know an artist working there right but then uh, and this kind of unexpected encounter then makes it more more approachable because you are there and there's there's no no gallery there's no museum right it's just you there as a, as a working artist doing what you love doing what, doing your thing and they coming in and kind of engaging right. in that conversation which that's what I love also this type of setting because it kind of uh, removes the barrier that sometimes people have. Uh, of uh, walking into a gallery, walking into a museum, and feeling that they gotta know something, right, about the art. Otherwise, they feel like, oh, I don't, I don't know, I don't belong here. But when they can approach the artist um, in a place that they don't expect, then then kind of like the the level, the playing field is leveled, right, for everybody. And I think that's such a wonderful ex uh, kind of a thing that happened there. It was. I had some mm -hmm. great conversations with some different people there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, conversations that I'd still like to have with some different people. They were just uh, nice to talk to. So it was a great experience and a good time. Mm. That's fabulous. So um, as you kind of uh, went, came to the end of the, your residency program and you were kind of finishing up with it and ready to go back home, um, what, what was it like for you to kind of like give it closure, right? Because you've been working there for two weeks and now it's like, okay, I think it's always, it's about to end. You know, tell me about this, maybe the last couple of days. Uh, how did you spend those, those last few hours? <laughs> I spent as much time as I could uh, painting, mm -hmm. uh, going in hikes, and mm -hmm. uh, doing some more painting. So, you know, just the act of doing this plein air painting makes you a better artist. Mm -hmm. You learn more about uh, the values or how to paint something, and you have to paint it quickly mm -hmm. and just try to interpret it well. And you'll start to kind of notice things or see things there differently than when you're looking at a photograph. Mm -hmm. uh, you see every detail when you constantly look at a photograph. It's easier to get more of the feel and the impression mm -hmm. when you're there painting 
But, you know, if you set up for somewhere and you're there painting for a couple of hours, the light will change on you in a couple of hours. So mm. there was one painting I, I had started where I was looking in one direction on the rim, okay. and then the light had changed so much, so then I, I turned and faced the other direction because it was a very nice area. I found this nice perch mm-hmm. on uh, the rim, and I was just painting in this location for a while and uh, enjoyed painting there, and uh, it was a very good spot to paint from. Hmm. but uh, towards the end, too, it got very windy, and I had to stop painting my last painting. Hmm. One of the things about painting outdoors is, uh, you know, you have to deal with some of the environment, which yeah. in that case was <laughs> quite a bit of wind. I was afraid it was just going to blow over my whole uh, easel, <laughs> so <laughs> I closed up and uh, left. So, yeah, there's, yeah, and uh, I think I might have mentioned this before, you know, mm-hmm. when you're out in nature, too, there's animals, mm-hmm. uh I something when I was painting one day darted by me. It was larger than a squirrel, but smaller than a wolf. <laughs> and I wasn't really sure what it was. It was anyway. out of the corner of my eye that I saw it. <laughs> and it might have been a, a badger or something like that, or a uh-huh. groundhog. Okay, I think it was, but it just quickly darted by. Uh-huh. But uh, it was it was sad to leave Crater Lake too. It was such a beautiful location, mm-hmm. and I enjoyed staying there and seeing the sights and. Hmm. Uh, painting the beautiful country. Fabulous. And, and when I came back hmm. to Illinois, too, when I first drive back the next day, I just felt the land was so different here, and I missed the, <laughs> the mountains. <laughs> oh, I can imagine quite a, quite a bit of a change right afterwards. But uh, yeah, in, in terms of, uh, you know, the relationship with, with the, um, I guess, with the parks, the national park itself, so were you expected to have certain amount of works finished, by the end of the residency, or were you able to kind of go back to the studio and continue working on some of the pieces? You know, how did that work? Uh, was there, what were the expectations that you had as an artist in residency uh, for the park? Okay. Or, or they or they give well, you kind of like free range to, to do whatever? Uh, it depends on the park, mm-hmm. but there's different variances with the different parks. Some want different, uh, some might actually want you to donate a painting. Hmm, now, Crater okay. Lake was different. They didn't have the storage for hmm. painting, so they didn't want uh, actual live artwork. They want digital images. Mm-hmm. So for what I'm doing for them, mm-hmm. when I wrote the proposal, is that I was going to do uh, the design of postcard, mm-hmm. and then I was going to do some work at my studio, Yeah. and then I would create digital pieces for them that they could distribute. I would create ones for cell phones, cell phone screens, wallpaper, and computer backgrounds. Okay. And then that, that way they could distribute them as they wanted. Okay. So for them, that's what they were looking for with my residency. Hmm. But, you know, for it depends on the artist and what the artist does, too. Maybe mm-hmm. somebody does something a little different, mm-hmm. and they might be able to contribute in a different way. I see. So so it can kind of customize it to depending on the artist. And, and also, I assume, kind of what you're proposing uh, in your application and that sort of thing, probably, right? Yes. Yeah. Different parts, mm-hmm. you know, might want uh, different things. Again, like some might want the uh, actual artwork. Some mm-hmm. might want digital images. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they also have, uh, they'll also welcome uh, musicians and oh, writers. Yeah. So mm-hmm. those, yeah. yeah. Uh, and where I was at, they also had residencies for scientists there. So wow, I was amazing. looking in the journal mm-hmm. at the residency at some of the scientists that had been there, and it was quite interesting to see what they were working on. Hmm. So that's a, it was yeah, quite an experience. That's amazing, and, and that's why you know I love the uh, opportunity talking to you because I had no idea you know about this about the national parks having this kind of programs, these kind of opportunities for artists, and you know so many artists who listen to this podcast and. Maybe uh, you spark some interest in some of them to start searching, start looking around for opportunities such as this, because I think they are fantastic. I mean, there's all different kinds of, of residency programs. There are residency programs where you go and you're working with a group and there's uh, uh, you know speakers and things that, that come in and talk to you. But there's also this other one uh, in which you actually w- are working on your own and you are uh, kind of working dedicated to specific uh, project that you're working on and uh, it's such a different one from the other but both uh, so, so important too and, and each one uh, kind of having its own experience and, and it sounds from what I hear in that you really enjoyed it and this is something that you would recommend to other oh. artists to do 
I would definitely recommend it to any artist to try. Mm-hmm. The national parks on their websites, if you do a search for them, they'll have information about artists and residencies. Okay. And the different parks have different residencies. Uh, they Some will be for different amounts of time, too. Some are for a short amount of time. Some are for maybe a month or over. Mm-hmm. And I recall, too, there was one for Alaska, where you're actually going with park rangers and hiking through the backcountry. It wasn't, it was uh, at uh, one of the more northern parks and it's more remote and you're not actually staying in a residency at that point. You're hiking over a couple of days with uh, some park rangers and you're mm-hmm. taking, you're, you're recording however you can by picture or by sketch mm-hmm. the artwork or well, the images that you see. Hmm. So it varies from park to park uh, what they offer. Yeah, and, but not every park has a residency, mm-hmm. but several do. And do they? And I would urge any artists yeah. that are interested to uh, investigate the websites, the national park websites, and find out the information. It's they're great programs, and uh, the national parks, you know, they were first artists were instru- just very instrumental hmm. in first showing and picturing how the national parks were before uh, they even had cameras back many years ago, hundreds mm-hmm. of years ago. And, you know, they would do paintings of these parks and it kind of sparked some interest mm-hmm. for the national parks. Hmm. Well, that's fabulous. That's fabulous. Thank you so much, Fred, for sharing light on all this information. That's def- definitely very valuable for many artists. So thank you so much for that. And, uh, you know, for um, giving us some of your time to talk about this and kind of changing a little bit of, of the topic now that you have finished residency program, you're back in the studio, you're working on also up, up making new applications for new residency programs. And um, this is something that, you know, definitely was beneficial to you. So you're looking to do more of, of these opportunities and that is wonderful. That's fantastic. And I wanted to ask yeah. you too, since, you know, you are also part of the our next level program that we have working with artists, you know, what's one of the, things that has the next level help you in your career? Well, writing the proposal for this uh, mm-hmm. residency, mm-hmm. Uh, Art Next Level was very helpful and uh, you gave me some great advice. And, mm-hmm. you know, your advice too is very good on, uh, you know, just things that are good to include in a mm-hmm. proposal. Mm-hmm. So it was a uh, great help having or being a part of the Art Next Level. Yeah. And and, then, and also, too, mm-hmm. besides that, I mean, there's other, you know, benefits, too. And, you know, for me, uh, the little bit of information that, you know, you find out about uh, different social media or just mm-hmm. some of the different apps to use, I found that very helpful. Mm-hmm. So there's been, uh, it's been a great resource. Wonderful. Happy to hear. And it, it's one of those things that, you know, when you write any type of proposal of any kind, whether it's for an exhibition, whether it's for a residency, whether it's for a grant or what have you, a lot of times, you know, because you're writing it, uh, you think that you are communicating what you have in mind, but having somebody else to read it and to give you feedback is is very valuable. Uh, I found that to be true of of anyone writing because, um, you know, some, I remember like when we were working on your, some, you know, couple things that I saw like, well, I mean, this sounds good, but, um, I think, you know, we need to hear more about what's in it for them, right? As artists, sometimes we like to say what's in it for me, right. but what's in it for them? You know, tell us a yeah, little bit more about that. I have like a clear sense that. of, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I might have, you know, that was something that I did have. I had sort of had a clear sense of vision mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of certain, you know, ideas of things that I wanted to do. And maybe to somebody else that, you know, yeah. isn't, you know, that would just be reading this wouldn't understand without, you know, good description of uh, what that is. So, mm-hmm. It was uh, good to have that uh, critique. Yeah, awesome. And one last question, uh, Fred, and then we'll let you go and we'll let our friends go too as well, continue the day. But any advice for an artist applying for a residency? You know, what, what maybe two or three things that you would say, you know, if somebody who's applying to a, a national park residency, you know, what were some of the tips that you would give him? I would say try to write the best proposal that you can. Mm-hmm. Get somebody such as the art next level <laughs> to proof it and uh, you know, just write the best proposal. Mm-hmm. Also uh, try not to get frustrated. Hundreds mm-hmm. of people mm-hmm. do apply for some of these residencies. Yeah. There are a lot of artists, a lot of good artists out there that are applying for it. And you know, I've applied for one or two before and didn't get in. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if you know, you don't get in, don't feel too discouraged. You know, mm-hmm. there's just a lot of artists out there that are applying to these. Uh, some of them, they get uh, 
probably around 200 for some of the national certain oh. parks that apply to them. Mm-hmm. So there are a lot of artists that apply. So patient is key, <laughs> right? Patient is key. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, Fred. Well, uh, as we close, can you share with our friends uh, who might want to see your work too and some of the work that you did for the residency and so on? Can you share your uh, website or in social media where they can find you? Sure. I have a website and it has my artwork on it. It's fredmoss.com. And if you go to the website too, I have an email newsletter that you can sign up for. Awesome. And I'll be yeah, sharing, you know, different uh, paintings that I'm working on. And I did one about the residency. Okay. I also have an Instagram account, Instagram, Instagram.com mm-hmm. slash Fred period Moss. And I also have a Facebook professional page. Mm-hmm. It's Fred Moss Art okay. and you, at Facebook. And you spell Moss with double S, right? M-O-S-S. Correct. Correct. Awesome. M-O-S-S. Perfect. Correct. That way your friends can find you there and follow you also on Instagram and see the activity that you're doing. And uh, uh, Fred, I want to say it again one more time. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciated uh, your conversation, your insight. I think this was quite a, uh, you know eye-opener uh, for me in terms of uh, I had never heard of this type of residency program. Uh, with the national parks and I think you have opened up some new insights new opportunities and I hope some of our friends take advantage of that and and uh, you know thank you so much for sharing sharing what you have experienced well thanks for having me on all right well my friends here in the next level thank you so much for being with Fred and I hope you enjoy this conversation as always you know if you enjoyed it please share it with a friend uh, let's get it to as many artists as we can so they can also you know experience and hear what Fred had to say about the the residency program. So thanks again for listening and I will see you at the next level. Check out our website at www.theartistnextlevel.com where you will find our podcast library, learn about our upcoming webinars, find resources relevant to your career, and much more. Thanks for listening to today's podcast and we'll see you at the next level.